Hey guys, before this video begins, you have 24 hours from the time that this video is released to get in on our free legendary giveaway. I always link it down in the description below, but make sure you follow our Twitch, join our Discord, and comment on the video linked below. First place is going to win a legendary. We will go on your account, we will buy you sacreds, and we will pull until we get your legendary. Second place wins the monthly pack here. And third place and the person that comes in dead last is going to win the mini mix pack as well. So get in on this. It's probably one of the best uh, giveaways I've seen and probably the best one of the easiest ways to progress your account quickly. So best of luck and hurry up 24 hours. <laughs> Hey guys, Lamaru here, back with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today we're just going to be looking at the update highlights for 3.20. Yes, before we even get into the video, I'm going to just show you something here, and it's kind of sad. So I just went over every single Legendary and Epic and went over their book requirements. And this was my findings, if I can get this on this page here. Legendary books. There's three new Legendary Champions. And they require 15 books, 14 books, and 16 books. So on average, oh you need 15 legendary books to book out any of these champions. And they most likely need books. We'll go into who needs books and who doesn't afterwards. In terms of epics, oh my god. If That's you, insane. If you were to get all of these uh, epics and you were to um, like just like book all of them... It's 145 books for, what is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 champions. So 145 epic books for it. Absolutely crazy. That is, that's insane. And the, the one champion that needs less than 10 books. Like, I just want to bring up an example here um, and go with like a really good champion that we have in High Elves. One of the OGs. I just want to count four. 8, 12. So 12 is about average, I feel, for good. 4, 12, yeah. The most good champions need about 12. If there's another good champion I could find. Do you like Mazo Mage or something? Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Silar, I think, is kind of in the same boat. 4, 9, no, 11. So it's crazy the amount of books we need to fully like make a champion useful because if a champion doesn't isn't fully booked they're not very useful gore grab five six ten and then where is miscreate um whatever his name is four five nine well, actually eight is on the low end and it appears like 11 is about the uh about the average for most characters in the game but it it's crazy. Um, it's very, very hard in this game to get books, especially legendary books and epic books. Um, I want to see how many I have currently. But like, what are they doing with this whole Lego book situation? Like, why are they turning champs into libraries? Exactly. And yeah, like, I have five epic books currently. I think I might have booked a couple people out. I think, oh yeah, I pulled Maneater and Fane, so I had to use like 20 books there. But yeah, epic books don't come easy in this game so hopefully they can just start combining things oh my god i'm going into my daily routine <laughs> hopefully they can start combining some skills because like literally five damage five damage five damage five damage five damage like this guy could literally get half his skills cut in half and would be just as useful like literally you just need two there three there three there how many books is that seven this guy doesn't need yeah, he doesn't need that many books. He they're, doesn't they're need just 15. asking for your money at that point. Yeah. They're like demanding your money at that point. Yeah. But let's go over these champions and let us know what we think. Um, so first of all, King Garag has an A1 attacks one enemy two times and has a 35% chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn. The chance increases to 50% if the target stern meter is equal to or below 50%. And the books just add damage. A1 stun. Okay. Easy. It's pretty good. Uh, it's about on par for most uh, orcs. They, yeah. Like, literally every orc has a stun in this game. Pretty much. Um, it's A2. Attacks one enemy four times. Each critical hit has a 50% chance of decreasing the cooldown of Goremaker by one turn. And that's on a four turn cooldown. Goremaker attacks all enemies. will ignore 20% of each target's defense. will ignore a further 
five percent of defense for each buff on the target so i guess he's gonna be an aoe machine using his a2 and a3 combining them and also has I mean, his, his a2 doesn't even have like a percentage chance of being better than 50 which it's literally all damage yeah but it's also attacking four times 50 percent chance so literally you if he puts Gore Maker on cooldown, he has like a 12.5% chance of immediately getting it back and then like getting it back in like one turn. It'd be pretty interesting to see like in Relentless what this guy could do. Um, and I then, guess. then he has a passive which increases his champion's speed by six and crit damage by 7% for each enemy this champion kills in a round. So you definitely want him killing people. Yeah. And stacks up to 30 and 35 crit damage. Stacks will reset if he's killed. And whenever this champion is revived, fill, whenever an enemy champion is revived, fill this champion's turn meter by 30% for each revived enemy. So, pretty interesting. It could be a counter like Cardinal teams. Like, they instantly get revived, and then you have like 120% turn meter, so you actually lap them, technically. Yeah. And then increases attack buff and 30% increased crit damage buff on the champion for one turn. Mm. Pretty interesting. You could see use for him in Arena, definitely just use in wave clearing as well. Uh, the next legendary is going to be Roxum, a magic lizardman. That's cool. I don't think there's very I mean, many. At least, there's, at least there's another Lego coming for lizards. <laughs> exactly. All right. Attacks one enemy has a 50% chance of filling this champion's turn meter by 10%. Also places a perfect veil 50% of the time if this attack is critical. Cool. It's kind of like Pixnules. Uh, does it place it on random? Yeah. No, it places it on him. Okay, so it's not like Pixnails, it's like... Who does an A1 Veil on themselves? I don't think anybody. Interesting. Maybe Excruciator? I think that's like her A3 or something. Yeah. All right, and then A2. Attacks one enemy, fills his champion turn meter by 50%. Really likes boosting himself up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, has a 75% chance of placing a stun debuff on the target for one turn, one attacking while under Veil. Has a 75% chance of placing a sleep debuff on the target for one turn when attacking without veil. Places a perfect veil on this champion for two turns after attacking without veil or perfect veil. Okay, well under a veil or perfect veil buff, attacks all enemies, has a 75% chance of placing a decreased defense buff and a 25% weakened debuff, decreases cooldown of jungle ambush by two turns, while not under veil or perfect veil, attacks one enemy. Okay, and then does basically the same thing. Yeah. It, oh, so okay. So it's one enemy if he's not in a veil. Got you. It's pretty cool how they like focus it around him being a chameleon, basically. Yeah. Like the perfect veils and stuff, and then has a passive of placing a block debuffs and twenty five percent strength and debuff on the champion for one turn and fifteen percent continuous heal buff for two turns whenever they receive a veil or a perfect veil. Wow, he's gonna be a little tanky boy. Yeah. Well, maybe, wait. What kind of champ is he? He's an attack champ, though. Hmm. I would have thought he was a support champ with all of this. I guess mm -hmm. he's, he's like a, I, he's kind of like a rogue if you like had to like pick a class yeah, for him. Straight assassin, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he's like a um, magic. I don't know. I'm. I, do, we're, what ability do we expect to do mad damage though for an attack champ? Um, well, it's really cool that he attacks and has a chance of placing decreased defense and weaken on all if he's under a veil. So he's going to pair really well with uh, Duchess. Mm -hmm. So that's on a four turn cooldown, which is okay. Then this is a three turn cooldown, one booked. Incre it's yeah, I don't, I feel, I don't know. On paper, it doesn't seem like attack is the right category for him. Yeah, I, I didn't think he was going to be attack with uh, all these skills. I thought he was going to be more support, but I guess he is attacking on every single one of his abilities, and yeah. usually supports just do more support things. He also yeah. has an ally crit rate in Doom Tower by twenty three percent. Hey, Doom Tower Aura. Yeah. All right, and finally, the last legendary, Iron Brago. This a, is the faction champ. So, has a 20% chance of decrease in duration of all buffs on his A1. A2 places an increased defense buff on all allies for three turns, then attacks one enemy. Has a 75% chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn. Has a 75% chance of placing a stun debuff for two turns instead of the target is under two or more buffs. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Tongue twisters. <laughs> Seriously. So that's, song that never ends. It's uh, booked up to 100%. That's fine. Um, and then attacks all enemies, has a 50% chance of placing a provoke debuff for one turn. Also places a 50% decreased attack debuff on all enemies for two turns if Iron Brago is under increased defense. 
That's a six turn cooldown book down to five. Uh, it seems like a way too long of a cooldown. I feel like if it was to be better, um, it would definitely have to be like a two turn provoke or like a four turn well booked to make it like a, extremely useful. Yeah, or, or uh, give him like the molly, give him like the molly provoke that yeah. has a chance of being two turns at least, so he's not too OP. Mm -hmm. And it's not even like he has a seven. He the thing is, he doesn't even have a hundred percent chance of placing the provoke either. It's only seventy five percent chance. Oh, yeah, it wouldn't provoke. What the hell? So yeah, not that great. Um, but he does get the guaranteed decreased attack, which I guess is fine. Um, also increases the defense of all allies by ten percent of this champion's defense. That that is that passive is gonna be so good though. Mm -hmm. Like actually, that passive is gonna be sick because mm -hmm. uh, you could pair pair him with like you could run like the ultimate defense team for real. <laughs> <laughs> Give him like six k defense. Yeah. Throw him in there with other. Throw them in there with other like defense champs, and there's an extra what 600 defense, hopefully at least, yeah. And then he For also, 10%, yeah. yeah, he also has the yeah, like a team like literally the most troll team ever would be like um, Razen, Valk, and then like um, you could do Chris, like because it'd be oh, Provoke yeah. City, yeah, Chris or like even Skull Lord too. Chris would be yeah. the better option though. Very troll. All right, moving on to the epics, we'll just try to go through these fast. Try to give them a thumbs up or thumbs down. Just reading their skills, not even worrying about what they do here. So we have a dwarf that is a, is an epic and is an HP type. Interesting. So attacks one enemy, has a 50% chance of removing a random diva from a random ally. Interesting. Um, definitely does not need like... <laughs> Fucking nine books. Is eight books? Eight books, That's yeah. That's crazy. Uh, A2 places a shield buff on all allies equal to 20% of this champion's max HP for two turns. Also places a continuous heal buff on all allies for two turns. I will say this champion is going to be great for Faction Wars 21. And so yes. her A3 is a revive. Revives two random allies with 20% HP and 20% turn meter and ascended. They also place a shield buff on the revived allies for two turns equal to their max HP. Interesting. Five turn cooldown with both. Not yep. bad. Uh, she's going to be real good with Mal um, Gala long raids. Yeah, true. Gala does more damage with shields. Uh, plus, Gala needs to be full HP and the revive. Interesting, interesting. So, Very I good. give her a thumbs up. Um, the books, thumbs up. Are, books are pretty bad, but yeah. Okay, um, A1 on the Chancel Yasmin attacks one enemy and Ascended attack, attacks one enemy, places an extra hit if the target has no active buffs. And then A2, it heals an ally by 40% of their max HP, heals by 60% if the ally has 50 HP or less. And A3 has a 50% chance of removing all buffs from all enemies, then places a sleep debuff for one turn on all enemies who have active buffs. So Kaimar's ability, except she sleeps them if nothing happens, but if you didn't rip the buffs, then I guess it's not 100%. Yeah. Why is it not 100%? I don't know, but... Um, but what's the point in having an ability that's going to rip buffs and like that's basically all it does if it's not 100%? <laughs> so she's going to be a thumbs down for me. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a thumbs down. Literally, she's in Battle Lords. There's people that do healing better than her that are literally uh, uncommons. So Commander has a three-turn heal that heals the lowest ally by 40% and then fills her turn meter fully healed. Um, so she's not even filling a role that's not filled in Battle Lords, basically. Plus she has an A3 that possibly might not do anything. Well, it's either it removes all buffs or it sleeps them. Yeah, it's... but then you have to build accuracy on her just for a, a sleep ability that you might end up interrupting anyways. Yeah, exactly. Because it doesn't, it doesn't say it can't, be, it can't be resisted, right? So Yeah, so that's actually terrible. Yeah, um, that's not good. So Vogoth, the undead HP champion, looks a lot like that other champion that's in... Crypt Witch? No, that looks nothing like Crypt Witch. What are you talking about? I'm talking about this champion here. Uh, buddy over here, Corpulent Cadaver. Uh, Corpulent Cadaver, that's Literally not even what I was thinking. I was... Is Crypt Witch in the undead? I think so. I, I think I feed her immediately. No, I guess not. I think she... Oh, uh, she's... I th oh she might be Night Revenant. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it looks yeah, nothing, right nothing like her. She's the first one. Yeah, but she looks nothing like this. 
Nothing at all. You're, you're wrong. <laughs> uh, A1 attacks one enemy three times. Each hit has a 30% chance of increasing duration of one random debuff on the target by one turn. All right, booked up to 40%. It's okay. Um, attacks all enemies has a 60% chance of placing a provoke debuff on all enemies for one turn. Also has a 60% chance of placing decrease attack debuff for two turns on enemies who receive the debuff, the provoke debuff from this skill. Um, so that's not even 75% chance again. Why will you not give us 100% chance? Champions that don't have 100% chance mean it's inconsistent, which means you don't use them. Yeah, basically. All right. And whenever this champion is attacked, heals all allies by 50% of the damage received and only heals by 25% of the damage received from boss attacks. And this champion only receives half of the heal that all other allies receive. Right? Bro, that, could, that can be so bad, though, at the same time. That's a like built-in mitigation or and lifesteal basically, which is cool. Um, and then he also has another passive: when attacked, places a leech debuff on the attacker for two turns. Okay, there we go. If the attacker is under a provoke debuff, places by the shield. It also has a seventy percent chance of increasing cooldown of a random skill on the attacker by two turns occurs once per attack. Uh, so that is a hundred percent chance. Um, unfortunately. I was going to say, actually, no, the provoke part doesn't even matter on Clan Boss. So you have a leech champion, basically, every single time this guy gets attacked. Spirit, which is good. He's an okay. He's okay. I was going to say thumbs down, but I think the that final passive just kind of made it a, like a, a, a sitting in the middle. Yeah. For me. Like, I, I might build him up to check it out. Mm-hmm. Definitely... But more interesting when you get to the passives on him all right armina magic barbarian that attacks has a chance to stun on their a1 attacks all enemies on their a2 has a hundred percent chance to decrease defense and steals 7.5 percent of the turn meter from targets under decreased defense debuffs and that's on a three turn cooldown that's pretty good Wait, hold on does that mean when it's placed it steals their turn meter or if they're already under it and then you use that ability Ooh. I'm I'm sure it, if it's if it's the latter, then that ability is kind of wasteful. Well, yeah, you kind of need two people with decreased defense if for it yeah. to work. Um, so a three decreases the target's turn meter of all. Sorry, decreases the turn meter of all enemies by twenty percent. That's pretty good. Has a seventy five percent chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn on enemies who have their turn meters fully depleted. And that's look at that. It's a hundred percent chance, which means it's not completely garbage. Yeah, and it's all, like it's like an AOE Tyrell's ability. I, I feel like, like this is my does. I feel like this is my favorite champion so far because also as their passive fills this champion's turn meter by ten percent each time an enemy receives a stun debuff. So pilled, paired with like Robar, paired with uh, Fushan, I feel like this champion is going to be Ooh. a lot better than uh, most That's of the true. other champions. I didn't even think of that. That's good. Yeah. So definitely, if you could cycle, and both of their abilities are three turns as well, and hundred percent chance. I like mm -hmm. this champion. Thumbs, Thumbs up for up. this one. We'll see. We'll see if our uh, predictions come true. Yeah. All right. We got Ursala the Mourner support for Banner Lords again. Banner Lords has so many support champions. All right. A one has a forty percent booked up to fifty five percent chance of decreasing the target's turn meter by ten percent. Meh. Very meh. Uh, A2 attacks all enemies, has a 75% chance, 100% chance when booked of placing a decreased attack debuff for two turns, also places an increased bu attack buff on all allies for two turns. That's good, three turn cooldown. And A3 revives all dead allies with 75% HP, then fills their turn reader by 50%, also places a 60% increased defense buff and 25% strength buff on all allies for three turns. Five no, turn cooldown. Right here. Right here. I thought you were going to give it me the middle finger. Right here. Yeah. And also has an ally speed in Doom Tower by 24%. Um, you're not even going to give it two thumbs up? <laughs> right here. Yeah. There you go. So that's a useful champion right there. Um, you can now you can now use Banner Lord's faction. Uh, you, sorry, you can now have a revive on Banner Lord's faction without having a Raglan. Yeah, that's true. I don't think anyone else had it. There you go. All right, we got an undead again. Spirit undead. 
who is an attack champion. So A1 attacks one enemy two times. Each hit has a 30% chance of placing this big decreased defense. Cool, it's not the small one. It's only 35% one booked though. A2 attacks one enemy two times. Each hit has a 75% chance of placing decreased accuracy debuff and 5% poison debuff for three turns. So booked up to 100%, three turn cooldown. Okay. Pretty good. And A3 attacks one enemy, has a 75%, 100% when booked to place a 25% weakened debuff for two turns, heals his champion by 50% of the damage inflicted. All right. And passive effect places a 60% increased defense buff on this champion for two turns when their HP drops below 75%, and places a 50% increased attack buff on this champion for two turns when their HP drops below 50%. Active effect grants an extra turn when this champion's HP drops below ten percent. That's a that is probably never going to happen. And if it does, it actually might kill the champion if he has two two rounds of poisons on him. Wait, what? So if you have like two turn poisons on you and you drop down to ten percent chance and it activates again, and if you have four poisons oh, on wait, you, oh okay, oh, just I, I thought, you. I thought you meant like he places poison on himself. I was like, did I miss something here? <laughs> No, no, he, yeah, he it's not. That's possible. I feel like this guy's gonna be middle of the road. Yeah, it's gonna be up in the air. I don't know. He it's will be a tough call. He will be very helpful though for the uh, faction wars bosses though. Yes, someone that does poison and decreased defense on their A one really good against uh, faction wars bosses. I feel like he's like in middle of the road again. Hmm. Okay, Farak and the Fat. Cool name. That that was mean. <laughs> <laughs> A spirit attack barbarian. So attacks one enemy has a chance of placing decreased defense, 50% chance. A2 attacks one enemy has a 75, 100 when booked of placing HP per debuff and two 5% poison debuffs for two turns. Book to three I mean, turns. That's a lot of damage. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And then also places a 30% increased crit rate buff and 30% increased crit damage buff on all allies except this champion for three turns. Then all allies except this champion will attack one target enemy. That's cool. That's very. I'm still, sorry, I, I'm still trying to think. Is there any other barbarians that do poison? Uh, I think Ragemonger does, but it's like a two point five. Yeah, that's about it. Well, that's cool. So, I actually, yeah. have a big poisoner now on barbarians. I feel like yeah. he's going to be really good for uh, clan boss. Um, he very well could be yes, and all allies except this champion will attack. Yeah, that's a really good ability. Yeah, I like it. I think he's going to get the thumbs up from me. He also has the def What's the passive? Deflects 20% of all incoming damage this champion receives onto allies. And the damage will spread equally across all allies. Okay. So, like, I mean, basically, it null and voids 20% like of damage. Yeah. Well, I mean, the rest yeah. of your team I mean, gets it. If you're, yeah, yeah, but if you're on clan boss, there's five champions, and you're spreading that between everybody i mean that could also mean that could also make or break your round too though mm -hmm. depends on what round you're on yeah all right next up duck the pierced magic defense orc <laughs> adding a lot of orcs lately so a1 mad chopper attacks one enemy two times each hit has a 30 percent chance of chance wow i'm having a stroke each hit has a 30% chance of placing a 50% decrease of accuracy debuff for two turns. I think that's the first person to have it on their A1 there. Yeah, like for orcs? For anyone to have a decrease attack, decrease accuracy on their A1. Okay, and if he basically, he decreases attack, and if he crits, he places decreased defense for two turns. Cool. Not bad. Yeah, it's a three turn as well, so that's actually really good. That's basically what you want this is yeah this is on par with all the good decrease defense decrease attack champions yeah all right so a3 places a provoke debuff for one turn on the target enemy also has a 75 percent chance of placing a provoke debuff for one turn on two random enemies places a reflect damage buff on this champion for two turns and an unkillable buff on the champion for one turn cool i mean there's there's better versions of it there is but it also it's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. It's a place. It has a four turn cooldown. Um, it's a shame it's not 100% to land two randoms, but I guess that would just make the skill more broken. Yeah. But he also has the faction crypt aura as well. I, I like him. 
Um, any champion that has a 100% chance of landing decreased attack and increased, uh, sorry, decreased defense is a win for me. It, um, the pool is very saturated now with the amount of epics in this game. So the more yeah. of them that can do AoE attacks that are 100% chance um, is always good. All right, wow, we still got so many to go. Uh, Sanguina, the support for Sacred Order. <laughs> Sanguinia. Sanguinia? I don't yeah. even know that name cracks me up. It means blood, doesn't it? In, like, Spanish? Maybe. I think so. If if I'm wrong, let me know. Our Spanish crowd. I don't know how many Spanish people watch this, but uh, let me know if that means blood. And it also looks <laughs> like she's bleeding from her eyes, so... Uh, attacks one enemy three times. Each has a 20% chance of decrease in duration of two random buffs on the target by one turn. Um, so 30% chance when booked. Okay, so... Alright. Uh, A2 places a block debuffs on all allies for one turn and a continuous heal buff on all allies for two turns. Um, three turn cooldown, so that's good for clan boss. And Sacrificial Lamb attacks one enemy, has a 75% chance of transferring all debuffs from this champion to the target, removes all debuffs from all allies except this champion. Four turn cooldown. Sucks that this is basically Lissandra's A1 minus the ally one, but I think it will come in handy. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad. Like, when booked, it's 100% chance of transferring all debuffs. Yeah. So, so basically, it's a full team cleanse. Yeah, basically. And the added bonus of if you have any debuffs on yourself, they get transferred. Yeah. Could be interesting, could be bad, but uh, three turn block debuffs for one turn is fine, especially if you get the mastery that extends it. I'll give her, like, a three-quarter thumbs up. Like, uh, I'm gonna go like a slanted. Yeah, like 75% chance. 75%. I'm saying 75% chance so much. I wanted to say 75 degree. She's one of those champs that I feel like you're gonna have to test out to really get your. to really see if it's worth it. Yeah. All right. The old Hermit Jorg, the only person in here that takes less than 10 books, has a chance of placing HP burn for two turns on their A1. This is a 50% increase attack buff on all allies for two turns, then fills the turn meter of all allies by 20%. And then revives two random allies for 60% HP, then fills the turn meter by 40% and places a perfect veil buff on them for two turns on a five turn cooldown. Orc Reviver. Is that the first one? I think it is. Is that the first Orc Reviver? I think so. Uh, nope. Um, what's her face also? Yeah, is it? Shaman. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Is that the first good, good reviver? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what you got to ask yourself. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, like, if you have second revivers, all it's good. Um. Yeah. Basically, it doesn't really do anything besides increase attack. I mean, is she is is he even really good though? Like, I, looking at his kit, it doesn't really seem like it. This... He's just gonna be another shaman. Basically, but yeah, at least he does increase attack and fills turn meter. And at least he puts a perfect veil on the people he revives. That's true, too. So they just don't die instantly again. Yeah. All right. And last but not least, Ugo. Magic organ. You know what? There's no one from Dark Elves that was... Uh, Dark Elves of High Elves literally got no one, finally. It's because they have no room left on the index. Yeah, probably. They're like, how do we fix this? Yeah. All right. Uh, A1 attacks one enemy, has a 35% chance of placing a leech debuff. The chance increases by 5% for each ally alive. All right, so you're going to have on clan boss 70, 60% chance? Does he, does he count? <laughs> I guess if he doesn't count, it's 55% chance. Um, A2, oops. A2 attacks all enemies, has a 75% chance of placing a decreased defense debuff for two turns, and a 50% chance of placing a block buffs debuff for two turns. The chance of placing the block buffs debuff increases by 5% for each alive enemy. So usually there's, what, five enemies four enemies i've played this game for a year and i can't even remember five depends on where you are actually no it doesn't four. arena is the only one with four so it's five all right so it's a hundred percent chance for both abilities when you're facing a full squad on a three turn cooldown uh not a bad ability i like it it really comes in, too. really comes in handy against that uh counter attack waves and yeah i'm just yeah it's placing so that's they can't be weak hit so that's really cool Alright, removes all heal reduction debuffs from all allies and removes one random debuff 
from all allies. Then heals all allies by 20% of this champion's max HP. If all allies are dead, revives them with 50% HP, then fills their turn by 50% instead. Um, but they all have to be dead. Yeah, that's the problem here. It's a four turn cooldown. It's it's good that it's a this or that because because or else the ability would just be useless. Yeah, if it was like a hidden ability that like if your whole team was dead. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just trying to w remember like how often do you get heal reduction on like um, ice golem? I guess does it. Well, yeah, or like I'm trying to think. But like ice golem yeah that's about it um so yeah probably gonna be a good ice golem champion um also strong affinity so if there's a chance that everyone dies you can come back to life and also place... i mean his pa his passive helps yeah <laughs> yeah places a 30 percent increased speed buff and block damage buff on this champion for one turn whenever this champion last living ally is killed okay so i wonder if that works with like one giant nuke so like one nuke wipes out everyone on your team. I wonder if this champion gets the passive proc. I'd say it might as long as he has the highest HP. So that okay. will be some interesting testing. Yeah, because in saying that, Sandlash passive doesn't work if everyone gets nuked in one hit. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because I use Trunda and she always lives, which is annoying. But yeah, Ugo, the last one. Interesting, interesting champion. All right, daily login rewards expansion. So they're going to be doing new daily login rewards, but they're just going to be doing the same ones over and over again um, from now on. So basically, it's probably just going to be like basically the uh, login, the uh, shop login rewards, except yeah. better now. And probably. They're getting ahead of themselves by saying we're just gonna repeat them over and over again. So probably like every month you might get like a void shard and like every other month a sacred shard or something. But some of the best information here is champion collection will go up to two hundred from two hundred to three hundred, and artifact storage will go from seven hundred to one thousand. I like that one a lot. That's a thumbs up. That's and a big thumbs up. Also, clan boss battles will always start in manual mode rather than in auto battle. Oh, so now they're just encouraging uh yeah encouraging unkillables yeah pretty much <laughs> yeah wow so overall i think there was a couple good epics in here all the ones that do a hundred percent chance decrease defense and like decrease attack and stuff that banner lords that banner lords reviver is sick she, yeah she's gonna be good so you said that iron brago is gonna be the fragment yeah, and all that of is the fragment champion it's you know what the one cool thing I will say is that they're releasing all these champions right, bef right before 2x Ancients. So chances are, hopefully, one of us will be able to get one of these champions and test them out. Yes. Um, uh, they come out Thursday, right? Yep, they come out on Thursday. So best of luck to everyone. Hopefully, you get the ones that you want. And especially if you're stuck on Dwarves, hopefully, you get the Melga Steel Girdle. All right, guys, this has been Lamaru. If you enjoyed this content, toss a like. And if you want to see more, toss a sub. And we will be releasing the details of our Twitch streaming schedule within like the next 24 hours or so. So make sure you join the Discord to find that out. Have a good one.